Hello, welcome back to another episode of Internal Rambles. This is your girl, Rochelle. If you're new, welcome, and if you're returning, thank you for tuning back in. I discuss everything from my life, trending entertainment topics, music, etc. I also do my reality show recaps. I'm currently recapping and reviewing Ready to Love Season 9, Fort Worth, Texas. Today is going to be a little bit different. I am going to be doing my reality show recap today of Ready to Love. I usually do this as a bonus episode or an additional episode, not on Thursdays, but we're going to do that today and then I will do that at the top of the episode and then towards the end, I'll do a few trending entertainment topics and maybe sprinkle in a little bit of life stuff. But first off, let's get into the recap of episode 7 of season 9 of Ready to Love, okay? I just want to make a quick announcement. Next week on Thursday, there will be no new episode. I am taking the week off in regards to my typical episodes. So if you do not, which you will not, <laughs> see a new podcast episode for me on Thursday next week. Don't fret. I am not going to be releasing a new episode. I will still do a reality show recap. I'm not sure when that will be released, but there will be no new episode next Thursday. So just a heads up about that. Okay, so let's get into season nine, episode seven. This episode was titled meet the friends the men are are in power which means a woman is going home all right let's get into episode seven recap of ready to love okay i have been mentioning this i haven't really seen any strong or many strong connections i will say that i think chaz and vanessa are a pretty decent connection there have been some people who have been mentioning that they have connections with people but i haven't really been saying it (laughs) nonetheless (laughs) let's get into the episode so tommy miles nephew tommy meets with the men in the men's lounge and he tells them their task is to have their best friends meet their connections so it starts off with Laron and he says that in the men's lounge he shares that during the diary episode that he is hoping that since the men are in power that he hopes that Alexis gets out of there because she is the head of the snake that a lot of problems have been caused by Will and Alexis and since Will is gone he's hoping that Alexis is going to be the next up as an aside so the first date is with William he has two friends meet Maya and they discuss the fact that William is a comedian and that they wonder they wanted to know how does she feel about his traveling? He's a comedian. He's going to be city to city. How does he, how does she feel about him not being at home or in one place for a long period of time? She says that that has not really come up in discussion, but that she's open to it. And I'm like, y'all ain't talked about that. But uh, That's kind of strange. If that's, if you two are supposed to be a connection, that should have come up because that's what comedians do. That's how they make their money. Typically, if he really is going to be a a successful comedian and really make a career out of telling jokes, (laughs) he's going to have to travel. He's going to have to be city to city, state to state. So that I, that makes me question just really how strong is his connection with Maya. If he hasn't brought up the fact that, Hey, I ain't going to be here in Texas all the time because I got to go make that money out here on the road. But she says that's not a problem or she says that she's open to him being on the road. So I'm like, okay, girl. 
they ask her about does she want kids and she does not have kids and she wants kids and so after Maya leaves they question how he feels about that because William already has three kids and so he does mention that that's something that he has to think about because he already has children and so he's not sure if he really wants to continue to add on to the children that he already has so I don't really know if I think he likes Maya but I don't know if that's really the strongest connection for him next up we have Justin who he has Rashina and Mika meet at his friend's house and I'm like why you why you meeting at your friend's house why can't they meet at your house but you know at the end of the day I'm not gonna question that if if he didn't want to show his house on the show if he didn't feel his house was up to par hey I mean I'm not gonna question that honestly so they discuss vulnerability and Rashina talks about how that's very important to her how she really needs that how she's really how that's not anything that she struggles with Mika talks in circles because we all know that Mika has been pretty guarded and that she says I don't really Mika is is very interesting but um the thing that was interesting about Mika meeting Justin's friend is she says that she never has been on a date with Justin, but they talk all the time. So I, I question also, what connection do you have other than your phone buddies? <laughs> like, why are you meeting him? Why are you meeting his friend and y'all haven't even been on a date? Y'all don't even know really, truly how y'all connect in person. So Mika was saying that, you know, when she... When someone doesn't want to talk, that she'll that she'll break down that barrier. But then also when she needs her own time, I don't even know what Mika was talking about. But there was concern about her garden, her guardedness, which has been a theme with the men. Ultimately, Justin's friend says that he sees him with Rashina more, that she seems more committed more committed to Justin versus Mika who seems more guarded and not willing to and questions how much she's able to open up to him and I can understand that they haven't even been on a true date other than this time that he's meeting with other than this time that she's meeting with Justin and his friend so I don't think that that's a strong connection for you Justin (laughs) <laughs> next up we have fine old chase has two of his friends meet alexis and vanessa and they discuss they ask about the process how the process has been has there been any drama and i wonder if Chaz has told them about alexis because alexis has been a common denominator in some of the issues with people and Alexis says that she is not one to start drama but she doesn't shy away from it if it occurs and it's like yeah girl because you the one that's been in the middle <laughs> they also discuss marriage and Chaz is very much I'm ready to get married and two months he doesn't really say two months but he definitely within the next year or two he wants to get married he that is the goal for Chaz and so Alexis says that she is ready to get married she's ready to have children that is the plan that is the goal Vanessa says that she's not really focused on marriage that she's really focused on just having a strong relationship so marriage is not really the ultimate focus for Vanessa so after the ladies leave they say that even though they believe that Vanessa is a connection for Chaz they they are concerned that that's not the focus for her and that is what Chaz's ultimate goal is so Chaz has a lot to think about next we have Alonzo who has his 
best gal friend meet Patrice and Rashina. And in a previous episode, Alonzo and Patrice has said that they have had a strong connection. And I'm like, okay, we really haven't seen it. But in this episode, it seems like maybe there is something there. Rashina has said that she thinks that Alonzo is funny, but he's very hard to read. He's very, that she enjoys talking to him, but she's not sure if he has a serious side. Alonzo's friend says that when that she knows when he is serious when he starts being romantic he pulls out all the stops for a woman and then Patrice she starts you know um, smiling and, and being all giggly and she starts reaching in her in her bosom and I'm like girl what you doing and she pulls out a letter and so everyone's like well what's that and she's like oh this is a little love letter this is a little letter that Alonzo wrote me so I guess he writing love letters to Patrice so I guess maybe that is a connection so Alonzo's like oh man when she did that I just wanted to kiss her I'm like chill okay so I guess maybe there is a little something between Alonzo and Patrice because he out there writing love letters um to uh last night i wrote this love letter and it went this way it's a little casey and jojo for (laughs) y'all okay anyways i'm not gonna sing the song but i guess maybe there is a little connection uh between alonzo and patrice and so i think the friend did like patrice for for alonzo and so he does seem a bit smitten with patrice Okay. Okay. Then William had Patrice and Alexis meet his friends, and Patrice was, you know, one of the things I say what I think about Patrice is no matter who she's meeting with, she will portray that she likes them and is into them. So it's kind of sometimes uh confusing who she's truly into because the friend also asked you know what do you think about his comedian his comedian career and Patrice is like well you know I own a Sprinter so while he's out there performing I could be driving the Sprinter we could be getting money together I'm like okay (laughs) so um with Alexis I don't know that they didn't really feel as though there was a strong connection with William and Alexis but with Patrice they felt like yeah she's supportive of your career she could really be there out there with you on the grind so we really like we really like Patrice more for you I'm like okay y'all next we have Dominique and Vanessa meets with Dominique's friend and they both discuss how they want children we know that Dominique does not have kids and he wants a whole football or basketball team of uh, children and so Vanessa has kids but she is open to having more children and so during that time Vanessa says that she really likes Dominique and she encourages him to apply more pressure if you into me apply the pressure so Dominique says I'm gonna apply the pressure girl you giving me the green light I'm gonna apply the pressure the last date was with Laron and his friend meeting Maya and Mika and of course with Laron it has to be brought up that he likes to party all the time shot 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 shots and Maya's like I don't mind the partying because we young and we can be we can party and we can have fun and so you know Laron's like yeah (laughs) I like that and so Mika brings up the fact that she has children and so and that Laron has never dated anyone with children so she inquires how are you going to deal with that how are you going to deal with a woman that has kids and he's like well you know I think it'll be fine if they need to be disciplined you know I'll just wrestle with them yeah I'll just fight them and then she was like what and he's like no I mean you know just play fight not really seriously 
So she said, well, you can't be the fun parent. There has to be discipline. There has to be seriousness. Child, Laurent goes out to the club Wednesday through Sunday. You think he's serious? <laughs> so at the end, the friend preferred Maya for Laurent because he said that she fits his life better, a.k.a. She may go to the club with him, but also would be okay with him going to the club because he's also his club buddy. <laughs> so at the end, obviously, they, the men deliberated. The last, the bottom women were Mika. The men felt as though she was guarded, which has always been the theme. And they have concerns because she doesn't want kids. And some of the men really are adamant about having children. The other bottom woman was Alexis because they feel as though she's been causing a lot of drama. Laurent was very adamant and vocal about getting her out. Very childishly so, by the way, in the men's deliber deliberation. Ultimately, they did send Alexis home. So Alexis is gone. Will is gone. Hopefully some, even though I did, didn't mind Alexis, some it was a lot of petty drama that I think was a less unnecessary. Maybe she said some things that she wasn't supposed to be saying, but she's gone now. <laughs> and in the next episode, the singles will be introducing their exes to their connections. So we will see how that goes. Here are my thoughts. Again, I don't really know. I think that I don't really know who has connections. It still seems like a lot of people are dating each other. At this point, you're meeting the friends, you're meeting the exes. By the time you're meeting the family, somebody better have some stronger connections. <laughs> but I do think that Vanessa and Chaz have a connection. Chaz has some other connections, so he's going to have to narrow that down. Supposedly, Patrice and Alonzo have a connection, but Patrice, if, whoever she's with, she got a connection with them, it seems. She does like, I believe she likes Chaz, too. So, I don't know. I don't know. Laurent ain't got no connection, no true connection with nobody. Dominique, I don't know. I'm not sure about him. Justin and Rashina, maybe 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 i don't know so we'll have to see how this show progresses i really think that laron could go i just think he needs to mature i don't think he's ready for a long-term serious relationship just yet to be honest so we shall see and that is my reality show recap okay Let's transition over to what I do on Thursdays. Thank you again for tuning in. I am combining a lot in this episode. Let's get into what I do on Thursdays. Just really super quickly is I usually start off, but I have been switching it up, but Rochelle's rave, something positive, something great that's going on, or Rochelle's rant, something that has upset me, something that has frustrated me. And I have a rave, I have a rave, I have a rave. <laughs> so my rave is just getting stuff done, being productive, little by little, checking those things off. I had a really uh, stressful day, anxiety filled day, thankfully, just using my coping skills, using definitely prayer, got through it. And yeah, uh, just living life on life's terms and not every day is going to be a great day, but pushing through and I feel okay right now. But then also just, I can be the queen of procrastination. There's been things I've been needing to do and that causes stress that causes anxiety because it's in the back of your head, like. I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. But then once you do it, it's just such a relief. Like, this is why you should not procrastinate. <laughs> but that's just that, just um, just getting things done, 
not procrastinating and checking off some of those boxes of things that I need to get through, pushing through adversity. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the positive people in my life and thank God for coping skills and yeah. That's a lot in a lot, but the, uh, just from where I was to what where I am right now, I'm just relieved and grateful, and that's that. So, um, and once March hits, it's gonna get busy. Not every week, not, but I just have a lot of stuff that I'm trying to do within the next six months approximately um or just not a lot of things but major things it's going to be time consuming a few major things it's going to be time consuming so yeah knocking some things off early on is going to help me later down the road so that's that so get stuff done man don't procrastinate that's my advice because child procrastination is just it's it's a self-defeating behavior ultimately <laughs> so that's that let's get into some entertainment news unfortunately um starting off on a negative note r.i.p to richard lewis he passed away this week at age 76 he is a comedian and i just was watching him on curb your enthusiasm and he passed away from a heart attack and just it just was so crazy because the episode I was watching he was talking what he was talking about and if you watch the show you would know but comedian like legend wonderful super funny R.I.P. to him so uh, if you've been watching the last season of of Curb Your Enthusiasm it's so good so R.I.P. to him and my condolences to his loved ones and um Larry David who is the like writer producer creator of that show wrote a really nice statement about him too so um yeah but anyways uh R.I.P. to Richard Lewis um I have a lot of topics that I'm gonna I was gonna talk about I don't know what I'm gonna actually hit (laughs) on today but since I just did a I'm not going to really go into this I did last week my thoughts on episodes one through seven of love is blind I think I'm up through did I watch episode 10 I'm not sure I'm definitely through episode nine I'm not going to go into specifics but what a crap show (laughs) I was watching a little bit of a, of Jessie Wu's recap of the show. She's so funny. But she made a, a really good point. Who was casting this show? Because none of these folks are serious about marriage. The majority of them are not. Married at first sight, I, I had to stop reviewing it because it is just one of the worst, if not the worst seasons and I, you know, I adore Pascal. The experts are great, but man, they got it wrong this season. Love is Blind. That Kenneth guy. <laughs> I know you lying. Okay, that's all I want to mention. I may do a, once the show is over, or I may talk more about it, but chill. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Um... 21 Savage, moving on, is doing an American tour. He did, uh, he was doing some shows. He finally was able, he got his, uh, able to travel internationally, internationally, was able to do some shows overseas. He is doing an American tour. Let me see if I can find when that tour starts. It starts May 1st, actually in Canada. But then it goes through June 15th and ends in Atlanta. And tickets, the pre-sale started today. 
so but the uh the normal sale is on friday he's going on tour with jid and lil harold and nardo wick and it's called the american dream tour so if you're a 21 savage fan get your tickets i would i've never seen 21 savage i wouldn't mind um i wouldn't mind seeing him so yeah and i've seen some clips of him performing seems like he does really good performing so i'm a fan of 21 savage so get your tickets to 21 savage and it looks like Cardi B is releasing new music on Friday, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I did see something. So she's coming out with new music soon. So if you're a Cardi B fan and you've been missing some of her music, she I think it's a freestyle. So be on the lookout for that. And then I don't really know much about this, but Don Lemon was fired from CNN very abruptly and they just settled with him and he got 24.5 million dollars for that firing so it sounds like they agreed that that firing was not right they did your boy wrong and i think they were upset about some comments that he made but yeah he got some coins for that fault for that firing so i don't you know it sounds like he's smiling a bit now and I, I know I had saw that he was supposed to be starting up a, I don't know if it's a podcast. Let me see if I can. Yes, well, it's called the Don Lemon Show. Um, but I don't think he, it says it will be available to everyone streaming on all platforms. So I don't know. I don't think it started. I don't think that show has started to my knowledge. So I think he's coming back with his own show soon. So be on the lookout for that. I always enjoy... Um, his New Year's Eve is he would he would get litty, okay? It would be a situation with him. <laughs> so shout out to Don Lemon. Okay, okay. A lot of people have been talking about the Netflix movie with Kelly Rowland, Mea Culpa, and I have not watched it. I may watch it, possibly, (laughs) in full transparency, I love Kelly Rowland, but I don't really care for Tyler Perry movies, the only ones I really liked were the Why Did I Get Married movies, I preferred his plays, sort of, kind of, but his movies... I sometimes struggle with and Maya Culpa has not gotten a lot of good reviews they, some people have been complaining about the ending I don't know Tyler Perry the writing sometimes it's like it'd be good and then it, you get to the end and you'd be like why 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 but it's gotten a lot of views so there's that but I think people have said Kelly did good in it so I don't know but I am one of those type of people that I don't if I want to watch a movie I watch the movie I don't go based off of what people say about it because there's movies that people have thought were horrible that I've really enjoyed so um if I watch it, I'm going to watch it because I want to watch it. Not because I'm not going to not watch it because people have said it's bad. I just, like I said, I just tend to not care for Tyler Perry movies. But supposedly there are some pretty raunchy shit change 
they freaking in a sneaking in there but um yes yeah, so i may watch it we'll see but i don't know i don't know neither here nor there so if i watch it i'll give an update speaking of netflix dono rollins has a netflix special that um when i'm recording it, it's actually number two on netflix I started watching it and then I got sidetracked so I wasn't able to finish it but from what I've seen I probably was about 15 to 20 minutes it's 40 minutes I think and it was I mean I think Donnell is hilarious so um it's produced by is it produced by Dave Chappelle it's under Dave Chappelle but nonetheless um it, it was funny so I gotta finish it but um, I think Donnell is, is hilarious and I'm so happy that he finally got a special. So um, shout out to Donnell Rollins. Okay. okay. And then in other TV news, what am I watching? What am I planning on watching? American Idol is back. I have not watched it, but I do plan on. I usually at least watch the auditions i did watch last season it was really good so i gotta get um caught up on the auditions but american idol is back so that's the only singing competition that i um that i do watch so yeah and then you know I gotta give you a cooking show if I can. <laughs> Eric Ajapong, he is a chef. He's gonna have a new show in March. And I'm trying to find the new, I'm trying to find the name of it right now. It's a culinary poker game and it's called Wild Card Kitchen on Food Network and it starts March 12th. So it says all bets are off as Food Network's test kitchen opens up its doors in an all new eight episode series, Wild Card Kitchen, where fan favorite chefs put their money where their mouth is during a high stakes culinary card game. The competitors who all know each other have settled scores to settle and personal stakes to lose as they battle to create dishes based on the cards they are dealt and bet using their own instincts and cold hard cash so eric keep a show okay he keep he keeps he's a host of the show he keeps a, a host of a show he keep a show in his back pocket he's the host of um Alex First of America. He was the host of the Soul Food Cooking Show that was on OWN Network, I believe. So he he be doing his thing. So shout out to Eric, and he is uh, uh competing on Guy Fieri's Tournament of Champions, I believe. So shout out to him. And then, if you want a new podcast to listen to. Tony Baker, comedian Tony Baker and Kev on stage have a new podcast called the Bald Brothers Podcast. They toured, they had the Bald Brothers tour and now they have the Bald Brothers Podcast where they discuss their top 10, I think, topics and they discuss different topics and they rank things. They did like their top 10, I think they did their top like uh who they <laughs> which gospel artists they think could fight i think it's on youtube um right now but i'm not sure if you have to join any of their patreons to see it but i believe that first episode is on youtube and i'm gonna assume wherever you can get your podcast content shot so very hilarious so shout out to them okay so that is this episode thank you for tuning in I would say bear with me with whatever my schedule is going to be because um, things are getting a little busy, but um, I'm still pushing out the content. <laughs> so, but next week I will be off. So I will take a week off from my Thursday episodes next week, like as I mentioned. So there will be no episode on March 7th. But then I'll be back the following week on March 14th, Lord willing. 
So let's get into what I do on Thursdays, which is song of the podcast. That is a new song, potentially, that's in heavy rotation or an oldie but goodie that I hope that you will love and put it in your rotation, put it on your pl- your playlist as well. And I have two new songs. One is by Quavo of Amigos, and it's called Hemothy, and it is a vibe so put that on your play listen to it hopefully you'll love it and put it on your playlist and another one is by mr usher and very cool story about this so this was a song that when usher was recording for his new album coming home he had released since he was uh playing it on instagram people loved it thought it was going to be on his album he did not release it on his latest album people got upset they were unhappy and they low-key petitioned they was like put it on the album why ain't it there do a deluxe and so he did do an extended version and so now it is out for us to listen to it is believe and i love this song i loved it when i when i heard it um on instagram way back when so that is believe by mr usher from his expanded edition of coming home so two songs hemothy by quavo and believe by usher thank you for tuning in truly appreciate you subscribe to me wherever you get your podcast content so that you get my episodes immediately you can also reach me at my official site internalramblespodcast.com and if you want to holla at me you want me to answer some questions that could potentially make it on a future episode hit me up on my contact page or leave me a voice mail take care of yourselves listen you matter and it can be listen rough out here <laughs> do what you need to do for you because you matter and until next episode this is your girl rochelle